Now this morning, um, as every other morning for the last few years, we'd start things off with a bit of poetry from our, from our uh, resident, one of our resident poets. Uh, he's a man that doesn't need much of an introduction to anybody involved in the arts or entertainment in Waterford. And a great guy and a, a, a great labour man, great socialist man, and uh, an all round good guy. Put your hands together, please, for Louis Quinlan. Thank you very much for that very kind introduction. Uh, I was having me, me blast out the back when the lads said, Come on, you're on, we're starting. So I had to finish the blast quickly. Here we are. I think we need to put an extension on for next year. Um, indeed, there is certainly a lot to consider in this country of ours. And I suppose I might call a inter-social observation. And uh, if, if, we, if, we, if we need to look uh, around our city and realize why things are not working, we can only look up at the hill there where there's a monument, uh, and it's called uh, Jury's Hotel. It's a sign of decay, and it's a sign of something that's not right in a society. When, when whole parts of society just lash into this decay because it can't generate a profit for somebody. Well, thank God for Walford Walls that they came along and they liberated this, this building. And now, you know, haven't been betrayed by our religious, haven't been betrayed by our bankers, and be betrayed by the people who are supposed to be giving us leadership. People like Walford Walls and Spree and the Imagine Festival are leading ordinary people to look at something else. I call this man up there on the hill, I call him Lazarus. When the city turns over another day, the sun drags below the horizon, fighting to lift the wintry gloom, encroaching darkness lingers wishing for the light to come. Nothing is ever black and white. The boys on the hill paint the day somewhere up there. When you feel the world turns away, look up and stare at me. When you feel the bleak midwinter will never pass, look up and smile at me. When you feel the onset of bitterness of loss, look up and scream at me. When you feel a dramatic symphony, open a dialogue, and speak to me. There is no vulnerability in speaking to me. The boys on the hill paint the day, somewhere up there. When you feel the world is turned away, long after the umbilical cord has been cut and broken, unique feelings transmitted inside in urgent bursts, internal echoes of human vulnerability, never seen, never spoken, never opened, echoes of human vulnerability. Open a dialogue and speak to me. When you feel the world turns away, open a dialogue and speak to me. Open a dialogue and speak to me. Thank you. Uh, this one is, is, is really about the, the, the change, the promise of change and, and change that, that, that will never come from the people who promise that change. The change will come from people in this room. And, and it's not a radical change. It doesn't have to be. It's a change of, of understanding of what sort of a society that we want. And I feel most Irish people don't want a society that excludes people, that shuns people, that judges people. This is called The Future is Unwritten because we are the shapers of the future. Take the winding road, it has no beginning and it has no end. Standing in the side street, waiting for this waiting to end. Looking at a city in all its splendour squalor, shame and regret felt on behalf of others. Poverty, forced exodus of the many. The demented and delusional seek scapegoats. Incense, it hangs in the air from past Latin masses and benedictions. There's no Latin mass spoke on the quay of Ballybricken or the Yellow Road. The flake in magnolia and water lines measure a history. In half a light of a foggy winter's evening, the silver blue crystal beams bounce frost from the rooftops and steeples. Others struggle to keep the cold out and the demons of the orthodox lock safe inside. 
Lines mark time and purgatory, waiting for this waiting to end, waiting for the change to come. Night City skyline, lit intermittently by a flickering neon sign. Parisian coffee bars and downtown wimpy bars that neither hold philosophy nor radical ideology. Calling God for salvation and a change is yet to come. A salvation that only man can deliver on. Another sunrise waiting for a tsunami of change yet to come. Another daybreak waiting for a tsunami of change yet to come. Another sunset waiting for a tsunami of change yet to come. Take the winding road. It has no beginning and it has no end. Holding my breath and daring to dream. Thank you. Everyone knows the Bally Bricker man here, don't they? Hands up, don't be shy. The Bally Bricker man was a certain character, uh, I suppose, <laughs> that could be spotted around Waterford for uh, the last 200 years and probably be around for the next 200 years. And here's a little perspective on the Bally Bricker man. Bally Bricker men in bowler hats and mohair suits, freshy pest collars and polished shoes. Short and sleeves rolled up, making blood puddings and timber casks. A large bottle from the shelves, sitting in smoky, sunlit beams. Twilight corners brightened in between. Labo hem crackles on vinyl one last time. Sharpening knives on backyard stone. Empathy cues taken from John Ford's cinemascope. The magic, the daydream. Cards played with the intent of a retired gunman. A down on his look circus showman, world affairs and global war sorted, sweeping white statements with the precision of a surgeon's knife, everything covered from creation to the meaning of life. Bally brick and men in bowler hats and mohair suits, often stews and Corpus Christi's processions, newsletters and papers views, winter evenings carry us home with crew beans wrapped in newsprint. Capped large bottles fill the front pockets of yesterday's press pants and necks of Cap's bottle protruding, eager to break free. Living in the shadow of yesterday's gunmen, the future in the firm grip of the past, another misspent Monday club afternoon, tea blenders and undertakers, pig buyers and snug, sipping on Downs as number nine, lamenting the loss of some life in a forgotten war. Debating Henry V and Shakespeare in the Battle of Agincourt and John Redmond and what might have been. A hunger thrust pacified with a, with a tea of tripe and blood pudding. Eating at the table, facing the wall in solitude. Staring at faded photographs of Kennedy, the Queen and Michael Collins hanging in between. Thank you. <laughs>